So in the last two examples, and honestly in the last section, they've been giving us a polynomial, and our job is to find the zeros. What we want to do now is we want to reverse this. We want to be able to be given the zeros, and then we want to come up with the polynomial that's associated with it. So before we get into the full-fledged example, let's learn a new theorem. And this is the conjugate zeros theorem. And it basically says, if you have an imaginary or a root as an answer, then you must have the conjugate as the answer as well. So if you have a plus bi, then you must have a minus bi, and vice versa. If you have a plus c root b, then you must have a minus c root b. Remember, these are called conjugates because they are exactly the same except for opposite middle signs. And it works the same for imaginary numbers as it works for the same as square roots. So in this example here, it's given us three zeros, negative 2 plus 5i, 1 plus 2 root 7, and negative 4. And in this problem, all we want to do is to find the other zeros. So all we need to know is that roots and imaginary numbers come in conjugates. So if I have negative 2 plus 5i, that means I must have negative 2 minus 5i as well. If I have 1 plus 2 square root 7, then I must have 1 minus 2 square root 7 as well. But only the roots and only the imaginary numbers come in conjugates. So if we have the 0 of negative 4, that doesn't mean that it comes in as partner as well. So the other two zeros are just these two zeros here. So what this means is in this polynomial total, we have five zeros, and that means it is going to be a degree 5 polynomial. So if we were to multiply all of this out, we have, would have something ending up with x to the fifth power. Okay, now that we know that, we are fully able to come up with a polynomial given zeros. So let's do an example. Suppose that a polynomial function has rational coefficients, meaning that means it has coefficients of whole numbers or fractions, and we need to know that information to use our conjugate zeros theorem that we just learned. And if we have the zeros 2i and 2 minus square root 5, then, in part A, we want to find the other zeros, and in part B, we want to come up with the polynomial. So we know that since both of these fit into imaginary or roots, we know that they both have a partner that comes with them. Um, the easier one to see, 2 minus square root 5, its partner is 2 plus square root 5. This one here, you might think of it as 0 plus 2i, so its conjugate would be 0 minus 2i, or just a negative 2i. And now what we want to do is we want to find the polynomial. So if we have the zeros to come up with the factors, we just subtract them from x. So we have x minus 2i, x minus a negative 2i, x minus 2 minus root 5, and x minus 2 plus square root 5. And notice I've listed them as partners, because when I multiply them, we're going to see things cancel out. Now, one of the questions that I get is, do I need to put parentheses around this here? And the official answer is yes, but watch what happens when I distribute the negative through that set of parentheses there. I get x minus 2 plus square root 5, and x minus 2 minus square root 5. And so basically all that does is that flip-flops my two factors. So I kind of skip that step knowing that it's going to work out in the end. Officially, I need to put them in there, but I know that once I distribute them, it just kind of gives me the same factors that I had before. So that's why I leave that step out. Get rid of all those red markings now. And then I can multiply all of this out, and this will give me my full polynomial that we're looking for. Notice since I had four zeros, means I have four factors, and that means I'm going to end up with a degree four polynomial. Okay, to multiply this out, I'm going to FOIL those two, 
and I'm going to multiply those two. It's always best to multiply the partners first, again, because things cancel out. So when I FOIL these two, let me first change this to plus. First gives me x times x, or x squared. Outside gives me a positive 2ix. Inside gives me a negative 2ix. And last gives me a negative 4i squared. And let me just work with this one. Notice that my 2ix's cancel out. And then we also know something back from the imaginary number section. We know that when we have i squared, we can always rewrite that as negative 1. So I have x squared minus 4 times a negative 1. Or I have x squared plus 4. And notice I now have whole numbers and I now have real numbers. I have gotten rid of all of my imaginary numbers. And that's why these come in pairs. Okay, now let's do the second multiplication over here. So first let me distribute this x through my first parentheses. That gives me x squared minus 2x minus x times square root 5. Then let me distribute my negative 2 through the same parentheses. Gives me negative 2x plus 4 plus 2 square root 5. And then last, let me distribute my square root 5 through. So I have x times root 5. I have negative 2 times root 5. And I have negative root 5 times root 5. But we know that any time we multiply two square roots together, we just get the number on the inside, which is just 5. Now, since I have three terms here and I multiplied it by three terms here, that means I should have nine terms total in this. But let's see what happens when I start combining these nine terms. I have a minus x root 5 and a positive x root 5, so those cancel. I have a positive 2 root 5 and a negative 2 root 5, so those cancel. So what I'm left with then is x squared. When I add my negative 2x's, that gives me negative 4x. And then when I add my constants, that gives me a negative 1. So notice again, I'm left with whole numbers and I'm left with no roots in this. So that's a reminder again of why roots or irrational numbers come in pairs and why i's or imaginary numbers come in pairs. Okay, so now all I have to do is multiply this out here. Notice I have two terms in the first and three terms in the second. So when I multiply this out, my next step should be left with six terms. So I'm going to distribute my back parentheses through my front. But if you did it the opposite way, that would be perfectly fine. So x squared times x squared gives me x to the fourth, plus 4 times x squared. Then distributing my next, negative 4x times x squared gives me negative 4x to the third minus 16x, and last, I'll distribute my negative 1 through. Gives me a negative x squared minus 4. So, combining like terms, x to the fourth minus 4x to the third, 4x squared minus x squared gives me a positive 3x squared minus 16x minus 4. And so that is my degree 4 polynomial. We knew it should be degree 4 because I had four zeros or four factors. And if I were to set this equal to 0 and work it the opposite way, I should end up with the same four zeros that I started out with here. All right, this is where I'm going to end this video. And in the next video, I'm going to be working another example of this here.